Hello, good morning. I um, wanted to do a video on chord transitions. I know that's something a lot of beginner ukulele players struggle with, um, getting your hands to do what it needs to do right off the bat. So I'm going to show you a couple of the um, beginner chords that uh, everyone kind of learns starting off. And then uh, a method of thinking through those transitions. So let's start with the chords. And um, I'm playing a just a soprano uke. I do have a low G, but it doesn't matter. So first one, and I'm going to talk about which fingers I'm using for each one of these. And that'll be important later. So the C chord, one, two, third fret, third finger. Notice ring finger, right? So one, two, three. There's a general rule. If you think about your index finger always being on the first fret notes, your middle finger always being on the second fret notes, ring finger always being on the third, and then pinky we're not going to use today, but that'll be on the fourth fret. So one, two, three. This is your C chord. Or zero, 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 three. I'll do that again. Zero, 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 three. Okay. Now, the reason we do that, our next chord is going to be A minor, which is second fret. So we're going to use our middle finger. Okay. Just that guy. And it's two, open, open, open. Okay. Next chord we're going to do is F. So we're just, we can leave that second one there. We're going to add our first finger on the first fret of the E string. So, two, open, one, open. Next chord we're going to do is G7. And the G7, from an F, you're going to move your middle finger over one string. And you're going to, this is going to break a rule. So, we're going to. We need two different fingers on the second fret, so we're going to tuck that ring finger underneath there. So it's going to make a triangle, and it's hard to see it as a triangle, but it's open, two, one, two, and that last two is with the ring finger. Okay, so couple songs to think about when you're doing that. Stand By Me and Heart and Soul, the song everyone hates when you play it on the piano, right? But everyone knows it. So, Stand By Me is just a little bit slower. So, if you start with the ring finger C, you're going to go to A. You're just adding that first finger. This is the hard one. Bring that finger over, tuck the ring finger behind, and then you just slide back up to that third finger, third fret where it's supposed to be. At the first, cross and tuck, slide. Now here's a cool thing. So, won't talk too much about music theory, but if you do, if you have your third finger on that C and you cross over to play that A minor, your ring finger is still one of those chord tones. Okay, so you're just doubling this string instead of the root. So. You don't have to let go of that one right away. It's fine. In fact, you could keep it open. You could keep that on there all the way up until the G7. For example, just add the middle finger, add the first finger. Then all you have to do is that. That's a great way to work on finger isolation. Okay. 
So I'm going to move my uke a little bit closer. I want to show you those chord transitions without playing. Um, just really quickly. And then I'm going to go to the next chord progression, which is kind of the wagon wheel progression. So, all right, super close here. One, two, three. That's your C chord. Middle finger, right there. So these guys, I don't want to do any rude gestures here. But uh, middle finger just on that second fret is A minor. Add first finger on that E string, so that's F. And then to get the G, tuck that one there. And your middle finger crosses over. And that's it. Then to get back to C, you just slide that ring finger up one. And there it is. Okay. So slide back here. Next progression is this wagon wheel one. So a little bit different, but you start with C. The next chord is G. So not G7, so just regular G. And See how these two, your first and second fingers, are just kind of hanging out? Again, we're not using our pinky right now. So, to prepare for G, you're here. Plop those guys down on the second fret. First finger is going to break the rule and come up. Middle finger is going to go on the second fret, right behind where the third finger currently is. And then, your third finger, your ring finger, is going to hop over, same fret, just hop over to that E string. Okay, so. Okay. So. Now, you would think it would be super easy to just hop over for that A minor with your first finger, here's why you shouldn't do it. Your next chord is an F and you need that fret. So this is where you go back to like, I know it's hard, your middle finger's right here and it needs to kind of crawl through to get there, but it'll help you in the long run get back to that F. So. Middle, first finger. Now remember in Stand By Me how I said you could keep that C down the whole time? So it's your third finger and it's right there. G. Now the last part of Wagon Wheel, it goes from a G to an F. It's a little bit tricky, but you're here. Keep this down for just a brief second as an anchor, and your first and second finger are going to kind of do this dance. So. All right. So I'll go through that all the way through. C. Second. That first, back to C, do that dance, okay. there's, there's wagon wheel all the way through. Um, now, last one I'm going to do, different key, so I want you guys to think about all of that in the key of C. Now we're going to switch to of D, so we need a D, A, G. Maybe B minor. You can throw that in if you want to learn bar chords. Um, those are all the chords for Starships by Nicki Minaj. Um, so that's helpful. So we already know G, right? This is open to one or open two three two right and mix that triangle with the middle finger 
Second finger is kind of tucked in there. First finger is there. Now, I learned this from an awesome ukulele teacher. Here's how you get to D. See where your first finger is already? There's a couple different ways to play D. A lot of people do this stacked. I very rarely use that because it puts my hand in an awkward, squished position that really doesn't get me anywhere. So, sometimes I'll cheat and I can do this half bar where this joint is just keeping that A string open. That's fine if you're going up to a bar chord um, version of the D, but this one, Put your first finger on that second fret of the C string. So again, it's going to break the rule here. Middle finger is one of your really long fingers on your hand. So that one's going to come way over here. To the same place it would be for A minor. And then your ring finger again is going to tuck underneath. Okay. So. There's that guy. So it's hard to see on a soprano, but I'm all on the second fret there. Kind of making a squished reverse triangle, right? So if you have that G7 and you squish that first finger in and bring them all over on that other string, that's where that is. Now to do an A, you just lift up that ring finger, slide that first finger back, okay? To get to G, this one's fun. So we're in that we're squished triangle. We're going to regular G. So we're going to bring... First finger's going to stay where it is, okay? We're going to bring our third finger out of the way. And just like we had to do to get to that A minor with that little crawl through, we're going to bring it back. Okay? So... So they do a little dance on their own. Okay. Now the last one is that B minor to G. Now this is where I use a kind of a cheat for my G, and it's another way to do it. So here's that sheet. It's barring the second fret with my first finger on the uh, C, E, and A strings, okay, leaving that G open. And then with my middle finger, right, so we're breaking the rules here, middle finger on that third fret. So to give you context, here's the normal G. Here's that barred one. Okay. Now, to go from B minor, you just need this note, the fourth fret on the G string. Typically, you'll see this as a full bar and then that added down. And your middle finger is kind of hanging out. It doesn't matter if you half bar or full bar, doesn't matter. Okay, because this is the one that's changing on that string. But to get to G, middle finger's hanging out, so that can go right there. Okay, this is also where that cheat comes in, as long as you don't need to get back to A. So real quick, and I'll put timestamps in all of this um, to help you find the one that you want to practice. Um, I would watch that section, work on that transition, and use those songs as examples. Okay. Um, Stand by me. Heart and soul is just the same thing, just very fast. Right. Wagon wheel. Um, and it has those two parts.
Then practice the D. Right back to um, D, A, G, or the B minor. Um, and yeah, it just takes time practicing. Um, I could do another video with some more tips on chord transitions. Um, but a couple quick things, I guess I'll, I'll just add it on this one. Um, when you're strumming and you're, sh you're changing chords every measure, you can do one, two, three, instead of down, down, up, up, down, up, you can do down, down, up, up, down, 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 down up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, 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 up,